Hello, welcome to Puffs and Poetry. I'm your host, Jessica, a writer, cannabis aficionado, and poetry lover. Today, we're taking bong hits. I love smoking out of glass for a few reasons. I'm a big joint smoker, that is obvious. But glass is more convenient. I don't have to roll anything. It also filters the smoke better because there's the added layer of water there. And in this particular instance, hitting a bong is actually a little bit easier because I'm going to read a longer poem today. And with a bong, I don't have to worry about my joint going out or canoeing or any of that stuff. So I am packing pretty close to a one-to-one -one mixture of CBD and THC in here. And this is definitely not a one-hitter, so I will hit this a couple times. This bong has been in my household for years, but it has been around for even longer than that. My partner has had this bong for, I don't know, 12, 15 years at this point. So it's a little bit worse for wear, but it is recently cleaned. It's about as clean as it gets. I don't know if you can see, there's a little ball stuck in there. Um, that's been there for many, many years. But it just goes to show how well, how long glass can last when you take care of it. It's a little bit tall to be hitting off the desk. So first it's gonna come with me. I think bongs are the reason that we have the saying, you have to cough to get off, because <coughs> a good bong rip usually hits you like that. Sometimes if you hit it again quickly, you can catch the cherry and not have to light it again, but this was clearly not one of those times. So I'm switching it up today because I am downsizing soon and my glass pieces will not be able to come with me. So I want to use them while I have them. Today we are reading from a Today we are reading from Mary Oliver's book of poetry called Evidence, published in 2009. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I have a longer one for you today. <clears throat> We'll get into that in a minute. I am distracted by the smoke swirling off the top of this since I did not clear it all the way. I could clear it now, but it's fun to watch. Our first poem today is called, It Was Early. It was early, which has always been my hour to begin looking at the world. And of course, even in darkness, to begin listening to it especially under the pines where the owl lives and sometimes calls out as I walk by, as he did on this morning. So my gifts, what do they mean? In the marshes where the pink light was just arriving, the mink with his bristle tail was stalking the soft-eared mice. And in the pines, the cones were heavy, each one ordained to open. Sometimes I need only to stand wherever I am to be blessed. Little mink, let me watch you. Little mice, run and run. Dear pine cone, let me hold you as you open. I have two thoughts after reading that one. Um, one, it is harder to read poetry after a bong hit than it is while smoking a joint. And two, um, my favorite line in this poem is in the second to last stanza. Sometimes I need only to stand wherever I am to be blessed. I think it is a beautiful and profound thought. <clears throat> Our second poem today is called With Thanks to the Field Sparrow, whose voice is so delicate and humble. It's a long one.
I do not live happily or comfortably with the cleverness of our times. The talk is all about computers. The news is all about bombs and blood. This morning in the fresh field, I came upon a hidden nest. It held four warm speckled eggs. I touched them and went away softly, having felt something more wonderful than all the electricity of New York City. I meant the um, title was long, not the poem. I have the first four lines of this poem highlighted in my book. I do not live happily or comfortably with the cleverness of our times. The talk is all about computers. The news is all about bombs and blood. And I, I think about these four lines often. This book of poetry was published in 2009. It's over 10 years later. And still, it's very true. And this, uh, the first line particularly, I do not live happily or comfortably with the cleverness of our times, comes to me quite often. <clears throat> so I was going to take another bong hit before I read the long poem that I was planning on reading today. But after taking those first two, something tells me that is not a good idea. I wonder if the mic just picked up that I knocked my teeth on that mug. So this bowl will remain half green and that is okay. Sometimes you overpack a bowl for yourself. It happens to all of us. <clears throat> so our next poem today, our last poem today is called To Begin With The Sweet Grass. And this is a longer poem. It is three pages, I guess four pages technically, four pages and seven stanzas. So there are different sections broken up in here, different stanzas, and you can see I have some lines highlighted. So this will be a little bit of a longer poem than one I typically read, but I love this poem and I hope you will too. To begin with, the sweet grass. Will the hungry ox stand in the field and not eat of the sweet grass? Will the owl bite off its own wings? Will the lark forget to lift its body in the air or forget to sing? Will rivers run upstream? Behold, I say, behold, this reliability and the finery and the teachings of this gritty earth gift. Eat bread and understand comfort. Drink water and understand delight. Visit the garden where the scarlet trumpets are opening their bodies for the hummingbirds who are drinking the sweetness, who are thrillingly gluttonous. For one thing leads to another, soon you will notice how, the, how stones shine underfoot. Eventually, the tides will be the only calendar you believe in. And someone's face, whom you love, will be as a star, both intimate and ultimate. And you will be both heart shaken and respectful. And you will hear the air itself like a beloved whisper, oh, let me for a while longer enter the two beautiful bodies of your lungs. The witchery of living is my whole conversation with you, my darlings. All I can tell you is what I know. Look and look again. This world is not just a little thrill for the eyes. It's more than bones. It's more than the delicate wrist with its personal pulse. It's more than the beating of the single heart. It's praising. It's giving until the giving feels like receiving. You have a life. Just imagine that. You have this day and maybe another and maybe still another. 
Someday I'm going to ask my friend Paulus, the dancer, the potter, to make me a begging bowl, which I believe my soul needs. And if I come to you, to the door of your comfortable house with unwashed clothes and unclean fingernails, will you put something in it? I would like to take this chance. I would like to give you this chance. We do one thing or another. We stay the same or we change. Congratulations if you have changed. Let me ask you this. Do you also think that beauty exists for some fabulous reason? And if you have not been enchanted by this adventure, your life, what would do for you? What I loved in the beginning, I think, was mostly myself. Never mind that I had to since somebody had to. That was many years ago. Since then, I have gone out from my confinement, though with difficulty. I mean the ones that thought to rule my heart. I cast them out. I put them on the mush pile. They will be nourishment somehow. Everything is nourishment somehow or another. And I have become the child of the clouds and of hope. I have become the friend of the enemy, whoever that is. I have become older and cherishing what I have learned. I have become younger. And what do I risk to tell you this, which is all I know? Love yourself, then forget it. Then love the world. I have two lines, well, I guess two sections of lines highlighted in this poem. The first is over on, under the third stanza, look and look again. This world is not just a little thrill for the eyes. It's more. And then the second section I've highlighted is the entire fifth stanza, which says we do one thing or another. We stay the same or we change. Congratulations if you have changed. Well, I appreciate you sticking with me for a longer poem today. I hope that it resonated with you. I hope that some of the lines stick with you the way that they stick with me. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for spending some time with me. If you rolled up or smoked, I would love to know, or ate an edible, whatever. If you consumed in any way, I would love to know how. Please share it with me. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you next week.